call women in combat. Um, I think there is a feeling that um, people thought these fights had been waged and that we were on sort of a fact-based side of them. And Hegseth seems to go back to a different frame on that. Yeah. It's not 1924. It's not 1824. It's 2024. These are arguments that are long since settled. And I think I said this last week when we spoke. You know, Pete Hegg says it is the manifestation of policies to drag America backwards. And this is a great example. There are combat units that have women involved all around the world. This is established as effective and, and commonplace. So it's a very radical position that is out of line with the moderate majority of America. It's out of line with our Pentagon. It's out of line with our allies like Ukraine and Israel. And I think we have to take a bigger step back here and ask people, you know, what is disqualifying? This compounded with the payoff that is now public. Would you like this person to be the principal of your kid's school? Well, your sons and daughters had to listen to that person and have that person be in charge. And I don't think there's too many people who would be comfortable with this person as the principal of their children's school. Why are they comfortable with him as secretary of defense? Well, they will be leading 2.7 million employees in America, sons and daughters in combat. It's really a ridiculous conversation at this point. We've got to get back to recognizing this is not normal. It's not acceptable and it's not inevitable. Remember, Donald Trump pushed Ronnie Jackson forward for VA in his first term and that went down in flames. And this one seems to be going a along a similar path. And I hope it's because moderate people in the middle and moderate Republicans say this is not acceptable from an integrity standpoint. We should not have public leaders that have these kinds of challenges and positions. Does it have the opposite impact? I mean, how does removing women from combat impact readiness? It, it undermines it immediately, right? I mean, you would have to literally remove women who are actively serving in forward combat roles right now. The best parallel is the trans ban, right? People didn't understand you'd have to actually remove people who are serving in units overseas right now. They're in places like Syria. They're around the world. So you'd have to pull them out of units. You'd have to replace them. You'd have to process them into different units. And you're doing all this while Vladimir Putin's licking his chops. I mean, our enemies celebrate this kind of disruption, this kind of chaos in, in our military. And that should be the one place that's insulated from politics and radical political views. And, and that's what I think is most disqualifying about Hexet. He is a culture war. He is a radical political operative. And that should disqualify him from the place that's supposed to be insulated from politics. The, the war against woke makes sense when you see them, you know, I don't know, talking about this network, right? Um, but it doesn't make any sense to me when you're talking about the military or the FBI or these very centrist, if anything, sort of center-right cultures. I mean, what, what is this really about? It's about an extreme political agenda. I mean, in implementing that agenda across the board in our government, starting with the places that to are To what valuable. end, though, if it makes it harder to win? I, that, that is the important downstream effect, is it is going to make us make it harder to win. But I also think there's another political component here. Pete Hegseth has to get through the Senate. You asked me who should we, would we be looking to to try to block this or, or stop this? There are a number of female combat veterans in the Senate. You had Tammy Duckworth on, I think, in the past. So is Joni Ernst. Joni Ernst is a Republican woman combat veteran. And Pete Hegseth is saying to her, you are not equal. You are not equal to the men who serve in this, in this military. And that's a fundamental American value. So what happened to integrity? What happened to basic American values of equality? Because when you say women can't serve in combat, you're saying they're not equal citizens. They don't have the same opportunity to fight and die for their country just like men. And I think that should be the central point we focus on. And we press to the, the, all senators, but especially the Republican senators who've served in the military, Joni Ernst most of all. And who runs that process? The, the Senate. I mean, they should. Senate all, Democrats? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody. I mean, I hope. Where are they? I mean, does Chuck Schumer make that argument? I mean, I've not seen. I hope they all make that. This is such a basic fundamental. I mean, we're actually arguing. We have to explain to people that all Americans are equal. That's where we are right now, right? And that's, that's going to be the case across the board in every agency. But starting with the Pentagon, we're going to have to remind all of America that all Americans are supposed to be equal. Because that's what this is about. If you're about freedom and you're about equality, then everybody has the same right to go and die for their country in America. That's how it's supposed to be. So I think that argument needs to be pressed on him. And, and just a reminder, it's not about qualifications and about loyalty. It's supposed to be about integrity. Being an honorable person who can stand up in front of our country that our enemies will fear, our allies will respect, and our kids can look up to. So I'm always going to keep coming back to the, the, the principal test. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay with this guy as the principal right. of your kid's school? I wouldn't. And America shouldn't be either.